Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews and this is the first of what will become a series of videos explaining the science behind the hobby. The technology that we use it has basis in science and I'll try and get across some of the theory and the, the, you know, the, the stuff behind the scenes that makes all this technology work and I'm going to start today with flaps. I'll be doing this probably a technical Tuesday, maybe a theory Thursday, who knows, once a week we'll get this video up using the new whiteboard so I can show you the real secrets behind how these models fly and how the technology works. It'll go from aerodynamics to electronics to all sorts of things, but let's just start with flaps. So here's an aerofoil, an airfoil. It's a cross section of a wing. Most wings, if you cut them in half or cut them down, you know, from side to side, that's what they'll look like. This is an aerofoil, and if you were old school like me and used to build models from balsa wood and tissue, then you'll have cut thousands of ribs that look like that. But this is your average wing. Now, wing create lift. And there's a bit of debate and discussion and argument over exactly how they do that. But I'm going to explain the two basic elements of lift as has been understood for some time. Now, I'll, as I say, there's some debate on this, so I won't go into it too much. But effectively, when our wing's moving through the air, the air splits, as you'd expect, and travels, some of it travels over the top of the wing like this, and some of it travels underneath like that, as you would expect. Simple, isn't it? So how does this produce lift? Well, there is one theory which is based on the work of Mr. Bernoulli. He's an Italian chappy who's come up with this idea, this theorem that said the faster air flows, the lower the pressure. Yeah. And actually, he's right. It's true. And you can prove this for yourself. I'm going to do another little drawing down here. Let's, let's assume we have a little a glass or a cup. And let's assume that we fill it full of lovely green liquid like this. Do, 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 do. There you go. And then you put a straw in it. You can try this at home. I don't mind if you try this at home. It's a good experiment to try at home. Put a straw in that cup and put your mouth to the straw and blow across the top. Blow really hard across the top of that straw. What's going to happen? Do you know? I think most of you probably already know. The liquid will travel up the straw and then spray out over here like this. That's because Mr. Bernoulli worked it out for himself. Where you have air moving quickly, and if, if you blow over the top, the air is moving fairly rapidly. Where you, have, where you have air moving quickly, then the pressure is reduced. So when you look at it, you've got a low pressure area here because the air is traveling quickly, but you've got a higher pressure because here the air is static. So the static air with a high pressure pushes on the liquid, pushes it up the tube, and then it blows out as a spray. That's how lift is generated, apparently. Some people believe it, some people say, no, no, that's not the right way at all. But for the purposes of this video, to keep things simple, we will just assume that Mr. Bernoulli is correct, and it's one of the reasons that wings generate lift, because, obviously, the air traveling over the top of this wing has further to go before it reaches the back than the air traveling underneath. This line is longer, because it's got a big bend in it. And so, if we assume that the air at the back and the air, at the, or air on the top and air on the bottom reach the back at the same time, then this must travel faster, therefore the pressure on top is lower. And that means that we end up with what is quite often drawn like this, which is a lift bubble, and that area there is actually an area of lower pressure. So when you have lower pressure on the top and slower moving air on the bottom with a higher pressure, you end up with a force that tries to lift the wing up. And it's called lift. So that's the Bernoulli component of the lift. But it's not the only thing that creates lift, if it does at all. There's another component, which is caused, thanks to, or it's explained by Mr. Newton. So it's a Newtonian component. And how does this work? What magic goes on behind this one? Well, it's also very simple. I'll draw another little diagram for you so you can probably work it out for yourself. Now, here's your favorite plane. And it's probably a Spitfire. Look, isn't that wonderful? I'm so good at drawing planes. Everybody loves my planes. Look at that. Here we go. And it has a propeller here. And the propeller spins around. And what happens when the propeller spins around? Air gets blown out the back of the prop like that, right? So we have an action. The spinning propeller has created an airflow that rushes off that way. But what, does, what happens when you're holding onto the plane? You can feel the plane pulling this way. The plane wants to move forward. That's the Newtonian component. It's because of the action of air, be blow, air being blown that way, there's a reaction which works in exactly the opposite direction, trying to pull the plane forwards. Now, if we go back up to our drawing up here, we can see that we've got air. And if I draw a lovely dotted line or line through the datum of this wing, 
What do you notice? You notice that the air leaving the wing is traveling downwards. It's been deflected in a downward direction. And Mr. Newton says, well, if this air is going down, the wing's going to try and go up. So we end up with a Newtonian component to our lift, simply caused by the fact that the air has been deflected down by the wing. Simple as that. So there you go, two elements to our lift. That's on a normal wing, no flaps, just flying through the air. Simple as anything. That's how lift works. So what we have to do now is work out, well, what do flaps do to all this lift and how does it work? And that's what we'll look at now. So let's get rid of this little datum, try and tidy up the drawing so it looks nice. We'll just take that line out, and we'll take this line out. I do like it to be neat when I'm trying to do whiteboard stuff. Never works that way, but, you know. Okay, so let's deploy our flaps. And flaps are at the rear of the wing, and you deploy them by angling them down. Here we go. Now we've put the flaps on. Slightly exaggerated for the purposes of this demonstration. What's going to happen? Well, obviously, the air here is going to be deflected down like that. And as you can see now, compared to the way it was before, where it sort of farted around here on a gentle slope, it's now a lot more downward movement of the air. It's going down at a steeper angle. What does that mean? Well, the action has been increased. The amount of air or the rate at which the air is pushed down has increased. Therefore, it only stands to reason that the reaction is also increased. So you end up with more lift, more of the Newtonian component lift. So now the, the wing will be creating more lift, all else being equal. Let's assume that it's still traveling through the air at the same speed, more lift coming from the wing. So, hey, that's really good. But more importantly, and I'll show you later, it's not the fact that we get more lift. I'll write this down so we know what's going on here. We get, these are the things that are happening. One, we get more lift. That's important, but we can actually get the same amount of lift as before at a lower speed. Because if we slow the wing down, then obviously the, the amount of air blowing down the board getting deflected will reduce until it gets back to the pre-flap level. So it reduces the speed at which our plane can fly. We can slow it down. Something else that's happening though, this top line. What's happened to this one? Well, the reason that the, the, the air sticks to the top of the wing is a thing called coander effect. I'll do a video on that later if you're interested. But when you have a sudden departure or when the angle gets too steep, it no longer follows the contour and actually breaks off into a big swirling eddy like that. It's a big swirling pattern of air. And that creates the next component, more drag. So suddenly there's a lot of drag. The, the, the plane will slow down if you have the same amount of power. It will slow down because more of the energy is going into creating this vortex here, this turbulence. So you'll end up with more drag and more lift. And that's what happens. That's what flaps do. So let's have a look now as to why or how we want, why we want this extra drag and lift and what we can do with it. Here is our plane about to land. And if we don't have flaps on, then it's going to have to fly at a certain speed, which would probably be reasonably fast. And so it'll take a certain amount of distance before it comes down from its starting height, right? So that's our glide slope, that's our, that's our approach slope. It's gonna be relatively shallow. Now, if we put the flaps on, like so, first of all, the drag goes up, so the plane will slow down. Secondly, the lift for a given airspeed will go up too. So the, even though the, um, the plane has slowed down, it will have the same lift. If you're flying it properly, it'll have the same amount of lift. So you'll end up with a different slope, a different approach slope. Now, if we imagine that we want to have a, say, a descent rate like that, on this glide slope here, we're moving that quickly. So we're moving quickly, we're descending at that speed. However, if we put our flaps on, because we're flying more slowly, we still descend at the same speed, but we don't take up as much space. Suddenly, this distance is much, much shorter than the distance we had before when we had no flaps on. So suddenly we can put our aircraft down in a much shorter space, much smaller flying field perhaps, a shorter runway. And so flaps enable us to do some much steeper approaches without risking stalling and falling out of the sky. Because if you tried to land this plane without flaps using an angle like that, one of two things would happen. If you tried to slow it down so that it wasn't going as fast, it would stall and fall on the ground and break. And if you simply put the nose down, 
then it would turn its altitude into speed, and when you went to flare, it would be going so fast that it would glide a long way and it would still touch down way down here. So flaps enable us to simultaneously slow down the plane whilst also creating more lift, which means that at that slower speed, we can still descend at the same rate. So flaps are really good for landing, brilliant, because they turn a fast model into a slow model, and it's always easier to land a slow model. That's why you see flaps on jets. Jets particular benefit from flaps because without flaps, firstly, it'd be very hard to slow them down, and even if you did slow them down, without being able to generate more lift at those lower speeds, they would stall and fall on the ground and break. So there you go, that's why flaps are often seen on jets, but you don't often see flaps on a high-wing trainer model. They don't need it because they already fly nice and slow, so they can land in a relatively short space. Okay, one of the questions I'm often asked about flaps is, what happens when you put your flaps on? What happens when you deploy them? What's the model going to do? Will it climb? Will it dive? Will it spin? What's going to go on? Well, fortunately, there are two basic rules of thumb which are pretty accurate in most cases. Now, not all the time. Sometimes, you know, models behave unexpectedly due to other reasons, but nine times out of ten, this is what's going to happen when you use flaps on your model. Now, first of all, let's look at the at your low speed, mo sorry, your low wing model. You know, your, your your Mustang or whatever it is that you've got, low wing Spitfire Mustang, something like that, and you put flaps on. You deploy your flaps. What's going to happen? Well, it's pretty easy to understand what happens and why. Suddenly, you've got that vortex that I was talking about before, and it's creating drag. Now this is the centre of gravity. Imagine that you've got a pin through there and the plane can rotate around that centre of gravity, which is what tends to happen. Because the drag is below the centre of gravity, then the craft will tend to rotate towards the drag like that. So it'll tend to pitch down in the nose. You'll get a nose down pitch. So the, the model will tend to want to dive because it's trying to rotate around the centre of gravity due to the drag. Very straightforward. As I say, nine times out of ten, that's exactly what's going to happen. Let's go to our high wing cabin model, our Cessna 172 or our, our Citabria or something like that. And you throw on your flaps, like so. Oops, not very good, but you throw your flaps on. I'm sure we can all guess what's going to happen now, because we have this big vortex, and it's actually above that centre of gravity. So in this case, what's going to happen is the model will try and pitch up as it tries to rotate. The drag will try and pull the back, top back, and rotate in that direction because of the drag. So that's, again, nine times out of ten, that's exactly what's going to happen. So if you have a low wing model, be prepared for it to pitch down when you put the flaps on. You can compensate with your elevator, of course, although some people will just put in a little bit of up trim on the elevator. So that in the transmitter mixing, that will take care of the pitching motion. It's not perfect, though, because the, the rate of pitch depends on airspeed, so it's not particularly linear. At a high speed, it still may pitch up or down because your trim will only work at one particular airspeed. Same goes here, because this will pitch up, you might want to put in a bit of down trim just to compensate for that pitching up motion. And, you know, of course, you can compensate quite a bit by applying the flaps slowly. If you just dump the flaps on, it's going to be quite a violent pitch up or down on some models. If you apply it slowly, then it's much easier to compensate by just adding a bit of um, rudder or elevator input as required. So, yeah, that's the basics of which way your model's going to go when the flaps are deployed. So there you go, that's the basics of flaps. I hope I've explained it well enough for most people to understand. Probably not. I mean, it's, you know, I do my best, but I'm not perfect. Um, one question that people also ask often is, will flaps lower my stall speed? And yes, they will, because as I mentioned, the flaps are going to create more lift for a given speed. And so if you deploy your flaps, you can reduce the speed and have the same amount of lift without falling out of the sky. So yes, as you apply flap, then your stall speed will drop accordingly because the wing is able to create the required amount of lift at a lower speed. Simple as that. Of course, your plane will still stall and uh, if you slow it down too much, so it's not, a, it's not a magic bullet. But that's flap. Now, as I say, if you've got questions, bung them on the bottom of the video. I've done my best, but hey, I can always add a bit of information later through the comments. If you liked what you saw, give it a thumbs up and uh, then other people will find it. Now, if you've got ideas for other Technical Tuesdays or Theory Thursdays, then also mention those in the comments. I'll do my best to accommodate everybody. And yes, don't worry, the audio will be fixed shortly. I don't have my carpet down. It's arrived, but I haven't put it down. Once I get the carpet down, hopefully it won't be so echo, echo, echo in here. But I hope you like the new whiteboard. It's lovely, isn't it? And uh, I look forward to seeing you again very soon on RC Model Reviews. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.